Hey guys! How's it going? I gotta mix my music levels this time. Because I don't want everything to be all weird. I don't normally do like music playlists. How's this mix? Is the music is the music right right about here? Does that feel good? Does that feel good for everybody? Is the is my voice loud enough? Since this is mostly gonna be me talking for the next hour. Sweet. I'm glad. If you didn't catch this uh, earlier, all the music on the stream tonight was either um, written by me or contributed to by me. It's all from Overclocked Remix, which is a organization of uber nerds that uh, makes video game remixes and I've been on staff there for like nine years. They're great and there's lots of good music. It's a ton of fun. OCRemix.org. My handle is Expert Novice, XPRT, XPRT Novice, like that, <clears throat> which I drop in the chat. Oh, nice, booty farts. That's great. I hope you do well. Have you workshopped it yet? Because there's a chance that I've heard it. Um, thanks for everybody coming. No, I didn't get a haircut. I guess maybe I just spent a couple extra minutes on my hair today. I don't know. Uh, but it's cool. Let's see what's next. What are we here to do? Uh, you can see in the, the background here, uh, I have three published novels, the first of which is Mechanical Failure on this side, uh, which side? This side. Uh, second is Communication Failure, which is behind me. And third, which came out today, is uh, System Failure. So the Epic Failure Trilogy is what we're here to celebrate today. I'm going to give you a little story. Um, the Epic Failure Trilogy started out in like a really kind of backwards way. So this is what uh, everybody wanted to know, like where it came from and, and what my inspiration for the, the trilogy was. The Epic Failure Trilogy is a, uh, a story about a guy named R. Wilson Rogers, who wanted, he left the military to become a con man. Uh, and then found out he wasn't very good at it. Ended up getting caught and forced back in the military. And then ever since then, just sort of tried to avoid work. And it, and it doesn't always work out for him. Um, if you don't know, uh, my I wasn't an actor or a writer in any stretch of the imagination for most of my adult life. I was actually an officer in the Air Force. So I served in the United States Air Force from 2003 when I entered the academy all the way out to 2013. Uh, I was active in 20, until 2012. And then uh, I left uh, active duty and went to the reserves as I worked for the government uh, for a little while. So um, the whole military thing is what kind of ended up uh, starting me on the path to publication. I was a writer since I was I was young. Um, and then Mechanical Failure is actually my sixth novel, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, and uh, so Worldcon is the world's biggest science fiction and fantasy convention for uh, for writers. It's a, it's a professional convention. It can get it, it can be small, it can be big, it's kind of all over the place. Um, but there was one happening in Chicago. I was in Missouri at the time, and I was like, well, I can drive to Chicago. That'd be kind of fun. So I decided I would pitch Worldcon and be like, hey, I'm in the military. I kind of write military stuff. Do you want me to come out and give a talk about what it means to have realistic military in fiction? I had a blog series at the time that was all about like creating a realistic military environment in your science fiction and fantasy. And they were like, yeah, sure, come out. So I convinced the Air Force to let me go. Like, they gave me free vacation. I was like, yeah, I'll just go as an ambassador uh, of the Air Force. Why don't you let me go out there and I'll talk to everybody about realistic military stuff and it'll be great. And they said, sure. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty awesome. Uh, I went out there and uh, I met some people through the panel that I was on. And it went really well. Um, and I met a couple other writers that ended up introducing me to their agents. And uh, then, you know, I, we, we talked and I sent that agent, I think my fourth novel. He was like, I really like this. Um, I don't want to represent it, but send me whatever else you write. Uh, and this is, uh, this is Jabberwocky Literary Agency in New York City, who also represents um, uh, Charlene Harris and Brandon Sanderson and a, a bunch of other heavy hitters. So they're like, they're, no, they're not slouches or anything. So it was super cool. And uh, then, you know, I was like, okay, I'll send you whatever else. And uh, I ended up writing this other epic fantasy thing that was just this like slog. It was like 220,000 words of this super like derivative. It just was awful. I knew it was a terrible book. And so I didn't end up sending it to him. And I was like, man, I need to cleanse my palate. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm gonna write something completely different. All right, I'm gonna write a book 
and it's going to be about a, uh, a typical evil lord whose soul gets ripped from his body and stuffed into a teddy bear. And I called it Death Bear and the Snuggle of Doom. And uh, it was just like this wacky fantasy novel that just like made no sense at all. It's still like, it, it's still one of my favorite books that I've written. And uh, so I send it to the agent and his assistant, his, he says, hey, will you put this on my Kindle so I can read it? And his assistant looks at it and goes, nope, this is my client now. And his, his, uh, his junior agent ended up representing me. Um, his name is Sam Morgan, who I'm sure you guys have seen on Twitter. I've been talking about him and with him all day. Uh, so uh, Sam ended up representing Death Bear. And we went to pitch it to a um, an editor who kind of looked at it for a bunch and ultimately was like, you know, I love this, but I can't, uh, I can't, I can't pitch it to the rest of my team, so sorry. And I was like, oh, well that sucks. Um, but then he came back to me like three months later and was like, hey, I'm starting a new imprint at Simon & Schuster. Um, we're looking for someone to write something that's funny, which I obviously you can do based on Death Bear. We're looking for somebody to write sci-fi, which I know you can do. And we're looking for somebody to write uh, military, which obviously you had military service. Why don't you pitch us something? So, um, that's the way it went and I was like okay so me and my agent kind of sit down and we're like okay here are some ideas I have about all this there's here's my military experience here's what I can pull from it um, uh, and um, so we did we put together this this book about basically a con artist it was uh, very like sergeant Bill Coe if you're everything like that and everything kind of came together yeah you're right uh, I'm really feeling it everything came together uh, and we ended up selling what became known as Mechanical Failure. The original title of the first book here on the, uh, over here, was actually terrible. It was called The Dim Beer Light. Uh, the Dim Beer Light was a reference to an Air Force thing um, that basically, let me, let me back up for a second. So I pitched Mechanical Failure as basically this allegory for what the military was like pre 9-11 and then what the military became post 9-11. Pre 9/11, like in the 90s, and uh, for the year, you know, like basically the 90s after the Gulf War, before 9/11. Oh, is it working now? Yay! Thanks, Alex. You guys are awesome. So what we're raffling off right now? Please don't enter if you're not in the United States. We're entering a personalized uh, raffling off a personalized trilogy. Uh, so while we're doing that, um, so the pre 9/11 military ended up being very, very not professional it was very like uh, it was very like whatever um there was a lot of stunts went on and then there was this thing uh then 9-11 happened and the, the military became hyper professionalized so i wanted to put someone in a situation where they were in one military left and then came back to the other military so rogers leaves the very unprofessional military and then comes back to the hyper professionalized military and has trouble fitting in the beer light is something in air force lore that uh, really like on Fridays, when the beer light went on, that meant it was time for beer, it was time for work to stop, it was pretty much like that was it. It usually went on around like noon. So the dim beer light was the original title of Mechanical Failure, which we found that like nobody would get. Obviously it just took me 10 minutes to explain it to you guys, right? So uh, we ended up changing it to Mechanical Failure because a lot of what's going on in the, the book is just, it's all, the whole trilogy is all about failure. So uh, that's that's really what like the uh, the epic failure series is about. It's about things just like never going the way you wanted to go. It's about a guy like all he wants to do is relaxed is relax, and uh, he just keeps getting into situations where it's not relaxing at all. And people keep handing him work. People get keep handing him promotions. And the epic failure series is basically like a satirization of my experiences in the Air Force, being part of a, a large and violent government organization. <laughs> Um, and uh, all the, the ridiculous things that happened. Um, I'm a satirist. If you're not familiar with uh, like satire as a device, I'm sure you are, but I make fun of stuff to make a point. Um, and I also write for a, I'm gonna pull this up here for a second. Uh, if you're not familiar with Duffel Blog, Duffel Blog is a uh, online magazine that's basically 
It's the onion for the military. I'm sure all of you have heard of the onion, right? Yes, this is Caravan Palace. Or, I'm sorry, Caravan Bowser. Uh, written by FlexStyle and contributed by with me. FlexStyle is awesome. Um, so if you're not familiar with Duffelblog, I also write some fairly hard-hitting satire uh, on the Duffelblog website um, using humor to try to make a point. There's something about dark humor that comes with being in the military. So like a lot of times people that aren't used to dark humor, humor read some stuff and they're like, ooh, that's, ooh, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do that stuff? So uh, I've probably written, I don't know, 25, 30 articles for Duffelblog. I love what they do. I love their mission. Uh, you, it's easy to find on Duffelblog. And so you can read all the, the stuff on there. That Marie Kondo article, actually, the, the headline wasn't written by me, but I read the article. And sometimes we'll pitch each other headlines if we don't have time to write it. So, yeah, uh, I'm a big believer in satire and what it can do for society. It, it makes light of stuff and makes it easier to talk about, and then we can kind of, like, move on from there. So, a lot of people ask me if uh, any of the, there are any things that happen in the Epic Failure Trilogy that are that happened to me in real life.